In a previous lesson, we discussed that the properties of matter describe it. What it looks like, what it smells like, its mass, its temperature, its color, what other substances it reacts with, and so on. In this lesson, we will learn to classify properties as either chemical or physical, and as either extensive or intensive. Chemical properties tell how a substance reacts with other substances as opposed to physical properties which can be observed without chemically changing the substance. Extensive properties depend on the amount of substance present. Intensive properties do not depend on the amount of substance. And all properties of matter we can classify as either chemical or physical and furthermore we can classify them as extensive or intensive. Let's do a few examples. We're now going to look at some properties and classify them as either chemical or physical and then additionally as either extensive or intensive. So let's take electrical conductivity. Copper wire for example conducting electricity. On the chemical versus physical side electrical conductivity can be observed without chemically changing the substance. So electrical conductivity is a physical property. Reactivity with water, on the other hand, is a chemical property because it clearly tells how a substance reacts with something else. Total internal energy in relation to, say, the amount of thermal energy that a uh, sample has. Um, we can measure its temperature and we can measure its mass without doing a chemical reaction on it. So total internal energy is also a physical property. The term ductile means that something can be drawn or pulled into wire. This is typical of metals and ductility is also a physical property because if you draw or pull metal into a long wire it's still the same metal so it hasn't changed its identity um, simply by being pulled into wire. Malleable means something similar to ductile except malleable specifically refers to things like metals that can be hammered into shape such as the copper sheets that cover the Statue of Liberty. They were essentially hammered into particular shapes and malleability is also a physical property because we can hammer a metal into shape without doing a chemical reaction on it. Brittle is kind of the opposite of malleable. Brittle is also a physical property. Um, glass is brittle, for example. If you shatter it, it hasn't changed its identity. It's still glass. It's just in many, many pieces now. And magnetism, too, is a physical property because we can observe it without doing a chemical reaction on it. Most of the properties that we run into on a daily basis are physical properties. You'll know a chemical property because it will refer to some sort of chemical reaction. It'll use the word react or reactivity or corrosion or combustion. So most properties are going to be physical properties. Let's look at the other side of the ledger. Extensive versus intensive. Extensive properties depend on the amount of substance present. Intensive properties do not. How about electrical conductivity? Let's go back to the top here. A small piece of copper will conduct and a large piece of copper will conduct. So clearly the amount of the substance doesn't affect whether the sample conducts. Therefore electrical conductivity is an intensive property. Same with reactivity with water. If something reacts with water, and not everything does, but if something does, a small amount of it will certainly react and a large amount will certainly react. So that is going to be an intensive property. As an aside, all chemical properties are intensive properties. In any case, total internal energy, that is going to be an extensive property. We talked about thermal energy just a minute ago and clearly the amount of 
a sample affects how much total internal energy it has. If you have a very, very tiny bit of hot water, boiling water, let's say, and you spill that tiny bit on your skin, well, it's not very pleasant. But if you have a large amount of water that's boiling, a bucket full, and you spill that on your arm, that's something entirely different. So the amount of total internal energy certainly does depend on the amount of substance. Ductility is an intensive property. If you take a given metal that's ductile, a small amount of it can be drawn into wire or, or a large amount. Same with malleability. Same with brittleness. A small piece of glass is brittle. A larger piece of that same type of glass is also brittle. And magnetism is the same way. Let's summarize properties of matter. 1. A given property can be classified as either a physical or a chemical property. Physical properties can be observed or measured without changing the chemical composition of the sample. In order to observe a chemical property of a substance, we have to react it with something else. Afterward, somewhat ironically, we no longer have the substance we started with. 2. Properties can also be classified as extensive or intensive. Extensive properties depend on how much of a sample we have. Intensive properties don't. They depend on the internal composition of the sample.